After all the work the Russians put into our 2016 presidential election cycle, we hear that they're dedicated to this year's red, white, and blue exercise in civics, hacking into the state voter databases and creating other portals to profit from their efforts. They are good at technology, propaganda, social media, fake identities. Our intelligence experts say the White House has issued no specific orders to push back, but they warn that whoever sees all this as a hoax is most likely fooling themselves, politically speaking. And now, Politically Speaking with Gene Cubison. The race for California's 49th district congressional seat has drawn quite a crowd, eight Republicans, four Democrats, and four other candidates. The district has been represented for nine terms by Republican Darrell Issa, who is retiring. In the 2016 election, he held on to a seat by just six-tenths of a percentage point. That was the closest race in the House of Representatives. Well, today we will be talking separately with two Republicans who want to be elected to that seat. And here now is Diane Harkey, a member of California's Franchise Tax Board and a former member of the State Assembly. And uh, also you are statewide co-chair of the effort that you partnered with Carla Mayo to hold a 199, uh, let's see, gallon gas event. gas event, yes, here in Encinitas, as I recall. Yes, it was. It, where volunteers gathered hundreds of signatures to repeal the, uh, the gas and the car tax, and also as the chairman of the Board of Equalization, I said chairwoman, I'm sorry, you stopped an additional over $617 million gas tax from going into effect you're taking that as a real sword fight. That's, yes, yes we are. I don't, I don't think we get value for our tax money. It's supposed to go into roads and infrastructure that we need. I think it's often misspent. I mean, you just look at the high-speed rail that just keeps milking the system. And, uh, you know, to put it... <laughs> I'm going to bring that up in just, just a moment. Let's keep talking <laughs> to pe petroleum. Petroleum. Well, petroleum is, you know, I mean, yeah. what gasoline is really high. And I know that it's at least a dollar less expensive in our surrounding states, Arizona and Nevada. And this is something that people need just to get to work. You know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a mandatory expense for most people. Public transportation only goes so far, especially in San Diego and suburban counties where people have homes in, in different locations. We continue to see uh, communications from Carl DeMaio. Where does this stand now? What's uh, your level of optimism that you're going to get to where you need to be with this? Oh, I, I think we're going to be where we need to be. Um, you know, we're just going to need to keep the enthusiasm going till November. Uh, it will be on the ballot. I okay. have no doubt about that. Uh, people are incensed, and it's a very popular issue. It crosses party lines because, of course, your pocketbook crosses party lines, too. Exactly. Um, High-speed rail. You brought that up here. When you were in the assembly, you introduced a lemon law that would have left California voters to defund the train to nowhere. I recall that when that measure passed back in, was it 2008? 2008. It was $10 billion, and we thought, oh my gosh, that's a staggering sum of money. And now we're up to, oh, in the 70 billions? Well, let me tell you the real backstory. Okay. Back when I got elected in 2008, the first time I saw heard about this is I was just looking through what could we do because you remember we had an economic crash Correct. and so and the state was underwater we had a ton of debt you know an extra 50 billion in debt was approved uh, there were just a lot of issues and so having a financial background I was trying to figure out how we reduce our debt and get our get our budget balanced and pay our bills and so I sponsored a law I found a little clause that if voters approve debt and the legislature thought it really wasn't necessary anymore, the legislature could reverse that that debt that was not yet outstanding. So I thought it's a natural, 10 billion approved, nobody understood we were gonna have that big crash, we, nobody understood how bad it was going to be, and so let's just you know get rid of this debt. It was an amazing experience because I don't think anyone in the legislature thought they had that kind of power, but if you just pull up the state constitution, you'll see you do. And that's what I looked at. I combed through it one night to see what I could do about the debt. And that was one, one you know, unused bond. And so it, it stirred up this, uh, you know, really statewide coalition 
of people and, and even, even legislative staff, transportation staff coming to me and say, have you seen this? And they started bringing me books and volumes of, of research on this. And the, 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 the ticket was they never really knew how much it was going to cost when this bomb was approved. And in fact, it could have been up over $200 billion at that time. Wow. So, you know, immediately it kind of raised, uh, raised alarms. I brought in the lemon law bill that just, you know, the voters bought a lemon. You know, that was a, an old TV commercial. Right, right, right. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. We're still battling that. I think it's been severely limited, but the bond funds that, that the voters approved are still basically mostly uh, outstanding because the federal government won't match fund it. Okay, uh, let's uh, bring this into the uh, train station now. Your thought about the business plan that has been uh, just put out for the agency. Oh, the business plan for the agency? Well, <laughs> you know, everything's good with a plan, <laughs> but <laughs> I, 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 I just think, I think we need to have, uh, you know, a little more focus on what people really think they're spending their money for. Okay bought too much too soon and did not uh, did not kick the tires and do yeah all I, the I think that the new business plan on the high speed rail will actually end up being affordable housing in Fresno mm -hmm. and a train going that way into the Silicon Valley and, and Northern California and I don't know if anybody in Southern California thinks that's a good use of their dollars. Thanks very much for joining us Diane Hart and coming up next on Politically Speaking. Another Republican candidate for the 49th District Congressional seat. Stay with us.